in the book of Exodus tonight. I uh, thought about taking a break from that book, but I'm going to do one message, and then we'll probably shift gears maybe. I've been studying a couple different things. don't want to get bogged down. Uh, but there's a, uh, I've titled this tonight, I know it's testing time. And uh, how true that is <laughs> uh, for our students last week and this week, a lot of them have EOG tests, and a lot of them stressed out. I know our grandkids were nervous and anxious because uh, the way they have it set up now, if you don't pay, no matter what your grades are all, th all year long, you get to the end. If you don't pass that EOG test, you sh or have a setback. And uh, But the Christian life sort of like that too. Uh, it doesn't work quite like that, but it works in a sense. And uh, uh, let me remind you that God tests us uh, to bring out the best in us. Satan tempts us to bring out the worst in us. And we need to understand that. We'll find our place in uh, Exodus 15. We're going to really read verse 23 through verse 26. We've already been there, and we've looked. The children of Israel have come to Marah, and that's where we pick up the reading. Uh, we see that we just, Moses, is just uh, they've had their first praise and worship uh, service there as Moses begins to sing, uh, reminding them of their deliverance and watching Pharaoh's uh, army and his, his chariots uh, even the finest elite men drowned there in the Red Sea, and they're over on dry ground. As they look back, uh, we know that Miriam also, in the 15th chapter, has the women, and she has her praise and worship group, and she's got the timbrels, and they're celebrating and uh, the deliverance of uh, the Egyptian bondage. And verse 23 says, And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which then he had cast into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. There he made them a statue, statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Uh, that word proved meaning tested them. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And verse 27 says, Then they came to Elam, uh, and there were twelve wells of water, and threescore and, and, and ten palm trees, seventy palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Uh, well, we need to understand as we look at this life's phrase of verse 25, uh, that God had a reason for hiding this drinkable water uh, from the Israelites. He has a plan. His plan is to test them. And what I want to look at tonight is why would he test them? Well, notice in your outline, uh, verse 25 says, And they cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. Uh, he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which he had cast into the waters. The waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. He tested them. Okay, so first of all, understand that, that God, I, I put in your notes, God tests people. But let me just say this, God tests his people. We could put that pronoun in there, identifying God. God tests his people in order to humble them and to reveal what's in their hearts. That's what he's doing here. Uh, the first thing, there's about seven things he, we see as a spin off of this one verse. So he tests his people in order to humble them and reveal what's in their hearts. You see, understand, they don't really know, in a sense, who they are. They've depended upon Pharaoh. They've been depended upon this Egyptian structure, okay, to identify who they are. But they have a greater identity. They have an identity in Jehovah God, and he wants them to understand that. I'm reminded, Deuteronomy, you, you see a close link between Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, particularly Exodus and Deuteronomy. Uh, listen to chapter 8, verse 2 and verse 3. He says, Remember how the Lord your God led you through the wilderness for these 40 years, humbling you and testing you to prove your character. There's the very reason. He's going to reveal what's in their hearts. And by the way, we, where, where do we find out where our character is? Our character is found in that inner drive, in our hearts. That's where who we really are. Uh, so he, he says, humbling you and testing you to prove your character and to find out whether or not you would obey his commands. He says, that's why you've been in this wilderness. That's why you're experiencing the wilderness. Uh, and it started even back here uh, with this water that they was what was not drinkable. 
He's trying to teach them. He's trying to test them so that he can not only prove their character, but so he can develop their character. Folks, if we didn't go through any tests or trials, listen, there'd be no other way to test or develop our character. Uh, he says, yes, uh, he, uh, Moses, right? Yes, he, speaking of God, humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna and food previously unknown to you and your ancestors, uh, something they'd never heard of. They'd never experienced this feeding of manna as manna fell from the sky and was fresh every day. They'd never experienced anything like this, but it was the bread of God. Uh, somebody said it was angel food cake. I don't know about all that, but it was the bread of God. But anyhow, he humbled them, letting them go hungry and then feeding them with manna. He said, a food that was previously known, unknown to you and your ancestor. He, why did he do it? Here's the answer. He says in verse 3, he did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone. Who else said that? Jesus did where? In the wilderness. Amen. So he, didn't, he, he said he did it to teach you that people don't live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. He, he's teaching them dependence upon what God said. Uh, what God's saying to them. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 16 and verse 17. Uh, Moses writes again, remind him, he, speaking of God, fed you with manna in the wilderness, a food unknown to your ancestors. He did this to humble you and test you for your own good. Folks, when God tests us, he tests us for our own good. Uh, I never did like tests in school, but I realized looking back, it was for my own good. It was to, uh, to evaluate what I had learned. It's always to evaluate weight, what we've learned and what we've achieved. And, and as we go through the different spans and eras of our life, we can stop and we can look. We went through this trial. We went through this experience. And, and we can look back and we can look at those things that God did to humble us and to reveal what's in our hearts. I found out many times through crisis who I really am. I found out in the hard times what it was like. I learned how to pray. I learned how to stay in God's Word and hear from God. Without those times in my life, listen, I wouldn't know how to trust him, and you wouldn't either. He said he did this so you would never say to yourself, listen, I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. He didn't want them to look back and say, hey, Lord, we've got this because we were good people. We've got this because of our own strength, our own ability. And, and they did it regardless, if you'll study the book. Uh, they did it, but he's teaching them that they, don't, they have no rights to do that. He's reminding them, listen, he's te he tests his people in order to humble them and reveal what's in their hearts. He said he did this so you would never say to yourself, I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. Folks, I'll be the first one to tell you that I'm a, I've got what i got because of the good grace of God. Amen? I'm standing here tonight only because of the grace of God and the calling of God on my life. Nothing within myself am I anywhere near worthy to do anything apart from the grace and the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ. I'm reminded of Genesis 22 when I think about this. You remember Genesis 22? Very familiar. As Abraham was going up to, to Mount Moriah to offer Isaac, if you remember uh, why was he doing that? Well, the scripture tells us very clearly why God called him up. The, he said, it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. That word tempt, there again, meaning test. He t we're going to test Abraham. And said to him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Same thing he's doing. You know what he's doing? He's revealing to Abraham what's in his heart. He's revealing to him what's in his heart. But I don't think he's only revealing to Abraham. I think he's revealing to his son Isaac what's in his father's heart. He sees and understands as he makes that journey to Mount Moriah. He sees the fire. Uh, he sees the wood. He sees everything he needs. But he said, but Lord, where? He says, Father, where's the lamb? He said, he knew about worship. He knew what it was going to require. And thank God God, had, and there again, we see in that scripture, he said, Abraham named that place Jehovah Jireh, which is God will provide. But you see, he had never provided. Listen, he provided all that as a portrait of Jesus Christ. You see, it's testing time. It was testing time for the children of Israel. And God puts tests in our lives again, folks, for his people to humble us and reveal what's in our hearts. Secondly, as we look at that same platform verse there in verse 25, and there he proved them. God tests us secondly. He tests his people in order to strengthen them and to keep them from sinning. 
Exodus chapter 20, verse 20 is an interesting verse. He said, don't be afraid, Moses answered, uh, for God has come in this way to test you so that your fear, fear of him will keep you from sinning. You know, if we never learned to fear God and to, uh, to respect God, we wouldn't have any regard towards sin, would we? You know, tests are, tests are for a purpose. God doesn't test us. You see, what the sad thing about it is some people sin, and they keep on sinning because they have no revelation. Listen, they have no revelation or ever into your fear of God in their lives. You see, lost people, ladies and gentlemen, do lost things. We need to understand that. I'm reminded of, of t thinking about tests to strengthen us and to keep us from sinning and, and reveal what's in our hearts. I heard a story about uh, Ohio State University uh, calculus class. They, they were doing a final. Uh, the teacher there was sort of uh, 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 ugly. He was sort of arrogant. Uh, he'd always stand in front of the class yelling out the time that was left remaining uh, so that they could end the test. And once the time run out, that was it. I mean, he just put the, he just put the pressure on these people. About a 1,000 students in the class. And during this particular final, as an old guy entered the test, uh, he really needed a good grade to pass the class. And his only problem was he hated calculus. Uh, and he did the test, he was doing through it, and the whole time he, he, was, he took a while, and he was the very last one, he kept, uh, he, he, he got to the place where he finally got to the end, and uh, five minutes turned into 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 40, and about an hour to hour, uh, the, the instructor said, T time's up, that's it. Well, he kept doing the test, well, just out of, uh, to be obnoxious and rude, uh, the um, instructor kept standing before the class, and he just kept staring at him and let him finish. And uh, he said, finally got uh, a few minutes. He said, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> uh, and he asked the student, and he said, um, well, uh, you see all those stacks of paper? Uh, he said, um, you've had plenty of time to finish your exam. Everybody that's done but you. And it's clear that I've waited long enough. You are going to fail my class. You go ahead and plan on being back in the next semester. Well, he walked up to the desk. He's going to turn in his exam. And uh, he, he smiled sli real slyly. And he says, sir, do you know who I am? And he said, what are you trying to do? What? The student didn't show any sign of emotion. The student rephrased the question in a mockingly manner. He said, do you know what my name is? The old professor said, no, I don't know what your name is. The student looked the professor dead in the eyes, and he said slowly, I didn't think so. He lifted up the stack, and he just stuck his test in the middle of all of them. He said, now figure out who I am. <laughs> well, I, there's no kids in here, so they can't, I, can't, I can tell you that story. So uh, sometimes we handle tests in different ways, don't we? Uh, but anyhow, you're going to run into those guys, uh, but God tests people in order to strengthen them and to keep them from sinning. And thirdly, God tests his people in order to see if they'll obey him. That's what he's doing here. He wants to see if they'll obey him when there's no water. What are they going to do? Listen, they're living in a dry, parched desert. They've already been three days without any water, and they're, they're thirsty. And, and we've already looked at verse 27 right on the brink of that. Listen, here, they, here's Elam. Uh, they came to Elam, and there were 12 wells of water, and uh, there was 70 palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. They had all the resources they needed, but they haven't got there yet. They're still learning to walk by faith. They're still learning that the, 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 the tests from God are important. So God tests people in order to see if they'll obey him. Chapter 16 Verse 4, the Lord said this in verse 4, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I'll rain uh, bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I, here it is, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. <laughs> he says, in other words, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I'll test them in this to see whether they're going to follow my instructions or not. Very, 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 very point blank. And sometimes, folks, God tests you and I. He tests us in our Christian life to see if we're going to obey him. He shows us a clear command from Scripture. He shows us a sin that we need to avoid. He, sees a, he, he directs us to make a change in our lives, so a way we're going, a way we're living, something we're doing, or, or something we're participating in. And he speaks to us clearly, and, and he gives us instruction. 
He does that so he can correct us, so that we won't face the chastening of God. And that's what he's doing here. He doesn't want them to face hardship. He wants them to trust him. He wants them to, uh, to test them in order to see if they'll obey him. You see, God is interested in their growth, and he's interested in your growth and my growth as well. Number four, God tests his people in order to, to refine them and to stir them to live a righteous life. <laughs> Zechariah 13 9 Zechariah said I will bring that group through the fire and make them pure I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold they will call on my name and I'll answer them I will say they these are my people and they will say the Lord is our God well you see he's describing here the process of, of that of refining of silver and gold and they would put, they would heat heat the elements, and they would get them so hot, and it would it become it would boil, and it would come to boiling. And what happened was that waste product would surface to the top, and they would skim the top off so they get all the impurities off. That's a reason God puts us through trials. That's why we go through tests and trials so that He can get those impurities out of our lives. Listen, He wants to stir us and move, refine us to live a righteous life, and and He does that. Listen, He does that through preaching. He does that through prayer. He does. That that through our relationship with him so he can get those waste products off our life so that we can be trophies of his grace when we're molded and we're melted into the image of Christ. Malachi 3.3 3. Malachi said he will sit like a refiner of silver burning away the dross. That's the illustration I've just given you. He will purify the Levites refining them like gold and silver so that they may once again listen offer acceptable sacrifices to the Lord. God tests his people in order to refine them and to stir them to live a righteous life. Folks, if there's ever been a day when we need to get stirred about living a righteous life, it's in the day in which we live. Man, we, I, I've been hanging around a lot of pastors, a lot of preachers, hearing a lot of different voices lately, and looking at the condition of the church and the atmosphere and the attitude around us. Folks, we need a, just a good old stirring of God. The, listen, I stand before you tonight. There's a lot of people discouraged that are serving God, trying to live for Jesus, looking at the political scene, looking at the economical scene, Look at everywhere you go at all the all the stuff happening, particularly with the things happening with Israel and, and how we're seeing all the, the marches and the protests. Listen, folks, we see very, very quickly that our country is not so much a Christian nation again. We're being overrun and overnumbered very, very quickly today in our generation. You just look at the thousands of people protesting and blocking highways and marching on the streets today in many of our metropolitan areas protesting uh, the war, the, the state of Israel. Uh, something's going on, folks. Something's going on. And I pretty much know what it is, and you can see it too if you know anything about the Bible. God tests his people in order to refine them and to stir them to live a righteous life. Number five, God tests his people in order to judge and reward them. We'll jump to the New Testament now for just a moment. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, chapter three, verse thirteen through verse fifteen says this. But on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. You see, folks, one day our work's going to be judged. Our work's going to be judged. What we've done and why we've done it will be, will be judged. If, it's been, if it was done for the wrong reason, if it was done for the wrong reason, listen, it's going to be like hay and stubble. It's going to be burned up. But if it's been dr done with truth and with honor, with integrity, with character, listen, it's going to stand the test. Listen, it's not going to suffer loss, but we'll find that there's going to be a reward for those who have honored serve the Lord Jesus Christ with t character, truth, and integrity. It co challenges every one of us to evaluate our lives constantly of why we're doing what we're doing. If he were to test us right now and our life were to end and there would be a test for what we've done and how we've done it, listen, what would he find? Would it be burned up because it's it's been uh, uh, out of the flesh or it's been to appease somebody else? It's been to entertain or has it been to honor him and to glorify him in trueness and faithfulness? Well, and that leads me to the sixth thing we find in this text, this thing of test. God tests his people to see if they'll genuinely trust him. That's what he's doing here. Uh, and we see it all through the scripture. If they'll genuinely trust him. 
There's a lot of folks talk about trusting Jesus, but will we genuinely trust him? It's more than talk, folks. It, it, it's a pattern. It's a walk. It's a life. John 6, verse 4 through verse 6, uh, it says it was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Verse 4, Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. And he turned to Philip and he asked, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? Uh, and verse 6 says this, he was testing Philip. He was testing Philip. He was testing Philip for he already knew what he was going to do. Wow. Think about that for just a moment. He already knew what he was going to do. Why? Because he was sovereign. And John, John's writings picture Jesus as his, in his sovereignty. He, being the Son of God, knew the mind of God. He already knew what he was going to do. But to, here's the thing. God tests his people to see if they'll genuinely trust him. That's what he's doing here with Philip. And man, there's a powerful story. There's something about Philip that's so unique compared to all the rest. Philip wasn't in the limelight. Philip was one who sort of took a back seat to John. Uh, the, he, he took a back seat to John, to Peter. Uh, he, he, he didn't care about being famous or proud. He didn't care about being up front. He just wanted to be a servant. Everywhere you looked at him, listen, he was one who genuinely trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether he was in the limelight or whether he was in the back seat. You study him out. We might do him pretty soon. Uh, I've been diving into him just a little bit. But Philip, uh, he, he, already, he was testing Philip to see what he would do. Well, and he's going to test you and I in different situations. This huge crowd of people is coming, looking for Jesus. And he looked at Philip. He said, where can we, where can we buy food to, buy all, to, food to feed all these people? I believe he's placing confidence also in Philip. Why? Because he wants to trust him. And he wants to, he was gen, want to, want, want, he's genuinely tr uh, testing him so he can genuinely trust him. Well, look at the seventh thing. God tests his people to see if they'll learn more patience and endurance. Uh, can't help but to think about James. That's what he's doing to them. You, they got to have water. <laughs> Uh, in chapter 16, that, that you remember, they've already, he've already been, we found the first murmuring complaint about them. They're grumbling, they're griping, they're complaining against Moses, blaming Moses for everything. And, and let, he's catching the clutch of it all. And then as we've read verse 4, we'll get into that next time just a little bit deeper. Uh, we see what happens. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I'll rain bread from heaven for you. And the people are going to go out and gather a certain rate every day. And here it is that I may prove them whether they'll walk in my law or not see there he he's given them a statute here notice the notice what he's doing in verse four there was a criteria for this manner of gathering it it was to be done every day every day folks listen i'm glad listen listen li, living the christian life is not just a sunday activity being a christian is every day listen there's fresh manna for you every day as you hear the word of god as you pray as you read the word of god whatever it is that you do to absorb the word of god in your life if you listen to a david jeremiah or adrian rogers or whoever's on the radio or watch tv somehow or another Get the manna of the Word of God every day because it's going to build you and strengthen you when the tests and trials of life come and it'll, bring, it'll develop patience and endurance in your life. James said this, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Uh, Relaxly, James says, uh, when, you fall, when you fall into diverse temptations, King James, when you fall into various trials, various tests or temptations, uh, and it's almost like we don't go out and say, oh boy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall into a temptation today. Uh, Lord, just, just let me fall into a trial today. I'll be honest with you, I don't wake up doing that, I promise you. And I hope you don't. You've got to be about crazy to do that. Uh, but you see, but the thing about it is, we're not looking for them, but they're going to happen. We're going to fall into them. And they come when you're not expecting them, by the way. And why? Because God knows when to send one, uh, listen, to draw you closer to Him. He says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity of great joy. Why? Why does he say that? Because God has placed that strategically in your life to develop you and grow you in character and integrity to be more like Jesus. And he strategically placed that in your life so you can go from this step to that step. And so many people fail from going from this step to that step because they, they collapse or whatever it may be and they're not looking for God in the midst of it. 
He says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. That's what James is saying. Your, your endurance has a chance to grow. Because when the next trial comes, the next circumstance or situation comes, you don't have to collapse. You don't have to crumble. You don't have to uh, drop tail and run. You can stand boldly and flat-footed before the world, the flesh, and the devil and say, hey, this is what God said. This is what God's doing, and I'm going to stick with it. He says, so let it grow, and when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. <laughs> He's talking about a relationship and a trust between you and God. He says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he'll give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Every single day, every time I open this word, every time I walk in this pulpit, I say, God, give me the wisdom. Give me wisdom today to make the right decisions. Give me the wisdom to say the right words. Give me the wisdom to, to direct people in the right path. Give me the wisdom to, to understand and, and dissect your word and deliver it in a fashion. It'll be understandable. Folks, we need more than anything today. We don't listen. I'm going to say that we don't need more education. I appreciate education. Education's good. I've got education. I've got tr formal training. But listen, more than anything, folks, we just need some good old-fashioned common sense, wisdom. I've never seen a generation of people so ignorant. Really. So book smart, we're life dumb. All across our land, folks, it's just the truth. No common sense about the common thing. And really, when it comes to God's Word, we've got this concept that, uh, that we can just throw out God's Word and do away with it, folks. You, you, you're going to be a failure. And so many of our churches have done that exact thing. I, I ran into one of our family members this past week, went to a, a, one of our neighboring churches. One of our neighboring churches. And she said, I, I, I don't know how they do it. The preacher never opened his Bible. He spoke for about five to seven minutes, and they went home. After all the other activities. Said nothing about the gospel. Now listen, said nothing about Jesus. Said nothing about anything that pertained to this word. God help us. That's the community we live in, folks. <laughs> that's, that's the culture we live in. And it's, it's accepted every single week. And no, I'm not going to name the church. That's just not my job running down. I'm just telling you what happened. It's a fact. That just shows you the mentality. Folks, God tests people to see if they'll learn more patience and endurance. Listen to Romans, 3, Romans 5, 3 through 5. Paul says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. Folks, God doesn't test us or put us trials on us. He doesn't test us to, to, so that we'll experience disappointment. That's not his goal. He, he doesn't want us to experience disappointment. Listen, for we know how dearly God loves us. Listen, because he's given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. He wants us to experience his love in a deeper relationship and fellowship. That's why we experience tests in our Christian life. Well, let me come to a conclusion tonight as I think about this verse. We see very clearly what he's doing to them, for them, through them. And we can apply that to us tonight. You see, God doesn't test us, folk, just to be testing us. That's not what he's doing. He just didn't keep water for them and, and didn't help them to come upon, upon bitter water for no reason. God always has a reason. He's sovereign. He has a purpose and a plan for our, their lives and our lives. God doesn't test us just to be testing us. He always has a divine purpose in mind. We've got to remember he's sovereign. We're not. He doesn't test us. Listen, he doesn't test us to discourage us or to defeat us, but to, he tests us to help us and to mature in our relationship and fellowship with him. Just like a student in school, we can compare that to the Christian life. If, if, a, if a teacher never tests a student, they'll never find out what their capability is. They'll never find out what they need to work on. They'll never find out what they need to to learn to advance themselves and be what they need to be as a student. 
The same thing's true in the Christian life. We have to take those things God teaches us through everyday life, through the experiences, the trials, and the tribulations we face, and we have to build off of them, and we have to grow off them. But, but here's what God's teaching them through the, teaching them and teaching us. Folks, God can take the bitter experiences out of life and sweeten them just like he did right here. He took the bitter experience they were experiencing out. Listen, he, he took that bitter experience and he turned it into a positive. Here they come to Elam now. Uh, but here they are. <laughs> here they are in Elam. And there were 12 wells of water. And there were 70 palm trees. Wow. Folks, God had something better in store if they'd just be patient and endure. God has something better for you if you'll just be patient and endure what you're going through right now. You're learning to walk with God. You're learning that He can handle any situation. You're learning that He can take your failures and your He can take your failures and make them successes. You're learning, and we're learning on a daily basis that He can make things that are bitter in life. He can sweeten them and make joy out of bitterness. You see, his goal, ladies and gentlemen, is for you and I to walk victoriously and triumphantly in this world. This world, much of our world, knows no, nothing about the victory that we sing about in Jesus. And if they don't see it in our lives, and here's the, the fact, they're going to see it more through your life when you're facing circumstances of difficulty and trials and tribulations, that's where they're going to see the real you. That's where they're going to see Jesus. When they see you walking victoriously and triumphantly before them, guess what? That's when they're going to look toward Jesus. When they see what you do with the bitter experiences, the test of life that come to you, many times that's when you're going to have your greater witness to them because they're going to, you're going, you've, you've earned a voice to them. They'll listen because they say, hey, you've been through that. I've watched your life. You've overcame that. And because you've overcame that, I'll, give, I'll listen to what you have to say. Appreciate you being here tonight. That's the message tonight. A lot of powerful stuff tucked in this one verse. A lot of truths. I pray that you'll go back over these in your own time. And uh, listen, when a, when a test or trial comes your way, don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't, don't de let the devil defeat you. Stop and ask these questions. What's God doing? Where, what's he doing through this? Have I inflicted this on, by myself? Is this God doing something? Is this Satan doing something? Have, have I, what do I need to do? How do I need to respond? Do I need God's help? Do I need his mercy? Do I need, do I need his grace to get through this? What can I do? What can I change? Where is he working? What's he wanting to teach me? There's so many questions we can ask ourselves when these tests of life come. Well, let's all stand tonight. I'm going to ask Danny to come and play tonight for us if we would. I, I don't know what you're facing tonight, but you may be going through a test of some sort. Uh, some of us may be. We probably are if we're walking with the Lord. And maybe there's you're in a place where you just need God's grace. You need his provision. Uh, maybe you need his wisdom and a decision. Uh, I don't know what it may be. Maybe you just want to come and pray for the leaders of our country, the leaders of our state. Maybe you want to come and pray for, for the leadership of the church to have wisdom and direction to know which way to go. Maybe you want to come and pray for your children tonight. Whatever the case may be, uh, I'm glad that uh, we can call on him. And maybe you're going through a test tonight or a trial. You just don't understand. Uh, maybe it's self-inflicted. Maybe it's God-orchestrated uh, for you to learn some valuable truths about walking with God. Maybe you need to come and say, Lord, I need your wisdom. What are you up to? What are you doing? Help me see where you're working in my life so that I can join you. Father, being obedient as I know how to explain the truth of the Scripture, Lord, I'm grateful that uh, we, uh, you are a trustworthy God. And, Lord, I'm glad and grateful tonight, Lord, that uh, in every step that we take, you're watching over us. We know that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And we know that there's not a mistake in our lives. You're sovereign. And we know that you test us and you put us through experiences, Lord, to develop our character and our integrity. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us tonight, Lord, uh, whatever's on our heart that we'll bring to you tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.